Our special guest today, former Blue Jays manager John Gibbons, twice and twice he led the Jays to the playoffs. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show, coming up! Welcome to the program. Very excited about today's guest. He was born in Great Falls, Montana. He was raised in San Antonio, Texas. He was drafted 24th overall by the New York Mets. He helped the Mets win the 1986 World Series. He coached with the Mets, Royals, and Blue Jays. Two-time manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. His career managerial record was 793, 789. He guided the Jays to the ALCS Championship Series in 2015 and 2016. He is host of the Gibby Show podcast. Please welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, John Gibbons. John, good to have you here, Gibby. <laughs> Joe, what an introduction, man. Could you repeat that again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let me do that again. That was a good. So, <laughs> no, Gibby, I'm glad to be here. We, we, like to, we like to begin at the beginning of this program. Now, so I understand that you actually played your first baseball game in Canada. Tell us about how that happened. Yeah, you know what? Uh, up in Goose Bay, Labrador, my dad was in the United States Air Force and got stationed up there for uh, three years. And this was, I, I think it was like 68, 69, and maybe 1970. And yeah, so that was uh, my first uh, First time I ever put on a baseball uniform, you know, and, and I can remember, well, my dad took me to tryouts because they, they had a, uh, we lived on the Air Force Base and they had a base league, right, with all, all the kids. And I, and I was so scared to death, I, I wouldn't get out of the car, you know, finally he said, the hell with this, you know, I took me home. <laughs> and, and luckily there was a, uh, one of the guys that he worked with was one of the coaches on the team, so he threw me on the team. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I probably never would have got into baseball, you know, but. But it started up there. It started up in Goose Bay. And, and, uh, it's, uh, you know, I was real, real young. I, I don't have a lot of memories, but there was a lot of good memories of that place. I can remember it was cold. It was the black flies. Yeah. Remember, oh, but I, I but uh, a lot. My parents loved it. One of their favorite assignments um, up there in the great, great white north. So what was it like? Uh Having a father in the military, do you guys move a lot, you know, having a father in the Air Force? You know, Joe, actually, yeah, when we were younger, we did. Um, and then when he, he was uh, shipped to San Antonio, Texas, which is a big military town, you know, there's, there's five bases here, four Air Force and one Army base. And he, he was in research and development, right? He did a lot of laser research and things like that. And so he was, uh, his assignment here lasted 13 years, which is unheard of in the military. You know, usually it's two, three years. So, uh, and I have a brother and a sister. And, and so we all did our schooling here. All our, our, all our really important years were here. So I've called San Antonio home. You know, I never left. And, and uh, he finished up in Bowling Air Force Base in D.C. before he retired. Um, so, yeah, th so this is home. But, I, you know, it's kind of kind of prepared me a little bit for the baseball life, you know, where you take off every, every spring and you're gone for eight months, you know? So I, I guess I was, it was kind of meant to be, I think. Well, I guess you have to be, learn to be self-reliant in a yeah. team game. Is that what you find? Yeah. Oh yeah, you do. You know, and you, and you gotta, uh, you know, anytime they need you to go somewhere, you're, if you're not very good, they send you here, they send you there, you know, you better, better be able to survive. And, uh, I know one thing, my mom was very self-reliant. That's for damn sure. Yeah. So what what when what made your mom self reliant? What why do you say that? Well, I'm, well, you know, she, she, you know, when you're, uh, it's it's almost like you know being an athlete's wife, right? It's, you know, you gotta when the when the team calls, or you gotta go somewhere. The you know the the spouse, if you're married, she's gotta you gotta run everything. She's gotta run. The, she's gotta raise the kids. She's gotta be good cop, bad cop, and you know when the old man comes home, that can be good cop. And uh, you really run a household, you know. So you gotta be able to rely on yourself and do those things. And uh, I had a wonderful mother that was really good at it, you know? Well, you know, what's interesting is you talk about your mom and, and uh, we, uh, we're going to show this a little bit later, but I think we should show it now. We got, we got some video of your mom throwing out the first pitch uh, at mm. a Jays game back then. Vic, uh, Vic, if you can find that video, I know it's a little bit out of order here, but. Uh, Great. Three yeah, tell, me about, 
tell me about this. Uh, uh, giving uh, you, you're getting a chance to catch it. Look at that man! She's right online. You know, might have came up. She short hopped it, but you know, my uh, who was it? It was Josh Donaldson's mother. Uh, got to throw out the first pitch one night. My mom happened to be watching on TV, right? And Josh, Josh was always my mom's favorite player. So she she said to me after she saw that, the next day she called me, she says, John, Johnny, Johnny, she called me Johnny. She says, <laughs> she says, I want to throw out the first pitch. How can Josh's mother throw out the pitch? I ought to be able to throw out the first pitch. I said, oh, God. <laughs> I said, Mom, all right, let me, go to work. let me go to work on it, you know. And uh, one thing I guess you could say, you know, manager of a baseball team uh, has a little clout. I think, I don't know, right, it, it, I guess. It, 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 it playing good at the time. So I talked to the right people over there with the Blue Jays, and they got her up there, and she brought her, you know, three of her grandkids. She had a blast. I was a little nervous, man. You know, I didn't – but you know what? It's not like my mom ever took me out there to play catch, but she's she's an athletic gal. She rides horses and all that. She, I thought she did she, – she's probably late 70s at the time. I thought, you know, she was going to have to roll it to me like she was bowling or something. But she cranked that baby oh, yeah. up and went hopped it. So no, it was she a thrill for us. She had, she had some velocity on that. I noticed that you scooped it. You didn't block the plate, John. I was, I was really disappointed that you uh, didn't get right there. <laughs> I know it, man. You know, we all change, man. Not always for the better. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about that. Your, your, your career as a catcher. You were drafted by the Mets in 1980. Had some solid years in the minors. Um, one year with AAA Tidewater, uh, the Tides. You had 270, 12 homers. That was a team that was playoff bound, by the way. And we actually have a clip from a young John Gibbons talking about that pennant race you were in with the Tides. Let's hear that, Vic. We live out at the ballpark. Tide catcher John Gibbons with holy cow, Gibby. They threw a pie in your face. Unbelievable. <laughs> we live out at the ballpark. Tide catcher John Gibbons with holy cow, Gibby. They threw a pie in your face. Hey, you guys are good, man. You guys are good finding this stuff. <laughs> Well, we, we got Paul Pasco, who's, uh, who's got an incredible uh, sports video library, an NHL library like you've never seen, but he dug up this stuff for us, which was pretty phenomenal, oh, right? Awesome. I, 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 I was that. guessing that's something you probably haven't seen, eh? No, no. I, well, you know, I, I remember when it happened, but I didn't. That's, that's a long time ago. But you know what, I, Joe, I spent a number of years in that in Norfolk. They called it Tidewater then, and they changed it to Norfolk when they moved the field, but I think it's. I played parts of five seasons there, and then I managed there for three years, right? And it's, you know, it's one step away, so it's not really the place you want to be. But it was a, it was a wonderful spot, and, um, you know, I got a lot of good memories of that place. How, uh, you know, you you uh, you did get a chance to crack the the uh, the Mets lineup a couple of times, but. One thing they had, uh, they had a catcher named Gary Carter who made it kind of difficult for other other uh, oh, yeah, catchers yeah. to come along. It's Fitzgerald first, and then they had Carter. So I mean, you know, you kind of packed there. Was it difficult to uh, to play for the Mets well, organization? Well, you know what? Well, because the, when they traded for uh, Gary Carter with the Expos, that you know, Fitzy Mike Fitzgerald was part of that deal. You know, so he went to Montreal. But what happened? I uh, I got drafted in '80, and then uh, you know. After maybe a little bit of a slow start, I, I went double A and had a really good year. And the Mets were so bad at that time, but they were they were starting to sign some pretty good players, some good young players. Davey Johnson became the new manager, so they they I went to spring training in '84. I was kind of their, one of their fair hair boys, you know. I was three first round picks. They had Daryl Strawberry in '80, and then Billy Bean, the GM, you know, the money ball, the famous. Moneyball was picked 23 right before me. So they had they had three of us. So things were starting to move in the right direction. So I went to spring training in 84. And they they gave me a chance to make the team. I had the best spring. So I, I was named the, you know, the, the uh starting catcher for the team. Then I got an injury like a, three days before we broke camp, you know, to start the 84 season. So they eventually came back and it was a battle and never really got going. And then it was that winter that they traded for uh Gary Carter, which you have to do. You know, he's a Hall of Famer. You know, uh, or you knew he was going to be. Yeah. He, was that, he was the best guy in the, in the game. And it kind of put uh, through a little roadblock up for me. Um, and then the really, you know, I got back a few times with the Mets, but it was never in a, in a really much of a playing role, except one year in 86 when Gary got hurt. And that was the famous, you know, Mets year, the championship year. So a lot of good memories of that place, a lot of great stories of that place. Um, but 
my dream didn't come true there, you know, and, and it never really did as a player. Then I got a chance to coach, which is uh, something I always had in the back of my mind, you know. Um, and then next thing you know, I'm in Toronto. Figure that out, right? Well, you know, how many guys get a chance to fulfill their dream of making it to the major leagues? And you mentioned 84, you did, of course. And then in 86, you get called up. And guess what? We have a, a video from you in that great run of 1986. And uh, you may remember this bat it, it, at bat against Marvin Freeman of the Phillies. Uh, and here's John Gibbons okay. at the plate. Gibby <laughs> is going to give this ball a ride. Let's watch it, shall we? Well hit left field. Read us back. This ball might be out of here. And in. Nine to three, New York. Yeah. Yes, sir. John Gibbons, uh, first big hey, league home. What was that like, Jimmy? It was the only one I hit up there. Right. I better remember it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what a, what an opportunity what a, what a great great uh great feeling like it's albert it. Pujols. I, bet, I bet albert pujols he probably there's a few of his that he's forgotten not this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah out of the 700 plus he might have forgotten one or two but yeah, uh, exactly. you're not forgetting that one no, uh, forgetting tell us about that, that not 86 tell us about that 86 team though what what sticks out for you the most about uh the, the the Mets in '86. Well, you know what, Joe? They were. Uh, I mean, it was a unique bunch. There's no question about that. You've heard, you know, everybody's heard the stories, and uh, you call them the wild bunch. You call them whatever. I mean, and, and it's and it's all true. But I, it is something. These guys showed up every day to play and to win. You know, they didn't get along all the time. There was a lot of fight, a lot of infighting, uh, which I think surprises some people. They think, well, how can you be successful? But you know what? If if the if the players are focused on winning and they whether they even like each other or not, when 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 it comes time to start that game, they they pull together. You know, a lot of good things can happen, and that's that's kind of what that team was. And you know, it was in the in the mid '80s, and New York was a crazy place, so that that group kind of fit in perfectly with the city, you know. And uh, and you know, he was one of the greatest teams ever. And of course, the uh, the Red Sox had the team on the on the uh, had, had a chance to put it away, but they couldn't do it. You know, it was almost the baseball gods interfered, you know, with the Bill Buckner play and all Bill Buckner, because, yeah. Yeah, because it was clearly – the Mets were, in 86 were clearly the best team. There's no doubt about that. And that was back before the wild cards and all that stuff. So, you know, uh, the game was a little bit different. But, you know, that team ran away with it pretty good. Uh, you know, that was a team that was well-renowned for, for the party scene, that's for sure. Uh, did you ever get uh, kind of dragged into that by any chance when you were there? No, no. You know, I was I was just a, a scared kid from Texas, man, just trying to stay out of the way <laughs> and try, trying to try, trying to survive, you know, trying to make the team. And the last thing I needed to be out there, uh, you know, hanging out with the wrong guys. Well, you know, actually the right guys on the team, but the wrong guys out of the out of the city, you right? Because, uh, because yeah. you know, I was I was in that position where you know I I, I really didn't want to be noticed that much because if, if they know as soon as they noticed me, they probably send me down. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that <laughs> guy? Send him to the minors. <laughs> Get him out of here, man! He's he's corrupting the uh, superstar players. <laughs> Oh, well, what uh, what uh, what did you take away from that that experience that you were able to later on uh, use as a manager? And, and when was it that you decided I'm going to take my shot here at managing? Well, you know, Joe, when uh, you know, I, you know, my playing career there with the Mets kind of was starting to fizzle, and, and I then I then I got traded to the Dodgers. I played AAA, but you know, I played probably about three or four more years in the minor leagues, AAA, and so I, you know, the writing was on the wall, you know, and. and uh, you know, I had signed out of high school, so I didn't didn't have a uh, my education uh, beyond that. But I'd always, you know, I'd always, uh, you know, thought that I might want to coach one way or the other, whether it be high school, college, or professionally. You know, and um, so sure enough, the Mets contacted me about a, a coaching job over there. So I took that. You know, and uh, it, uh, you know, I I had always had a desire of that, but there was still, but you know, my life, you know, I. I'm, I was married, you know, I wanted 20 kids and things in it. And it, you know, still, it was frustrating. My baseball as a player it hadn't worked out, you know, but I needed a job. There's no doubt about it. And this, and uh, I had always thought about coaching. So I, I took that job and things started work. Things worked out pretty well, you know, and, and uh, 
next thing you know, uh, you know, JP Richard, he was one of my roommates in a ball and he's out there with Billy Bean now in Oakland. Uh, well, at that time is his right hand man. And then because you know, the story, he ends up getting the job in Toronto and I had walked away from the, uh, the Mets, um, because I want, you know, thinking of my family, you know, and I wanted to get a job closer right. to home because, you know, so the next thing you know, JP gets that job in Toronto. Next thing you know, I'm in Toronto. So that's kind of it's it's that's just the way it happened. It, it, it it's hard to really explain how everything fell into place. I've been a blessed guy, I'll tell you that I really have. And uh, so that, that's how it all started in Toronto. You know, me and JP, the uh, see, we're both Bostonians. You know, believe it or not, I mean, he's uh, his family's born and raised there. And then uh, you know, my my mom and dad are both from Boston, and then uh, my dad okay. joined the military. So that's what I don't tell anybody that though, man, because I like him. I like him to think I'm a nice guy. <laughs> no, he Gibby can't be a Boston guy. He's way too nice. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he committed my accident, but my mom, you know, my mom's still that. She still got that. But but anyway, that that was our connection. That's 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 how I got to Toronto. You know, an old buddy, the buddy system. You know how that. You know. Well, of course, yeah. No, so um, you know, I know you, the Mets were too far away, uh, but the Blue, Blue Jays is even further away. But it was obviously a better opportunity to date you got with JP uh, with JP an opportunity. To oh yeah, him. well, well. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. There's no doubt. You know, that's, that's the big leagues, right? But I start. I didn't start out as, a, as like a uh, coach. I started out as a bullpen catcher. You know, uh, but it was but it was a job, and they weren't. The thing is, when I walked away from the Mets, you know, I, uh, I interviewed for a couple uh, jobs closer to home, baseball jobs. That nothing happened. So it kind of was at the point too that, you know, I got a family. I might want to get a job. <laughs> I might need a job. You know, and that's kind of. Uh, so everything just kind of lined up for me. And then next thing you know, there was some volatility there in Toronto. You know, they all those lean years and next thing you know, I'm the manager. So uh, oh. it's hard to explain sometimes, you know, but a lot of good, a lot there, of people have been really good to me. There were some lean years, no doubt about that. But okay. What time, what kind of job were you doing in the interim when you, when you left the Mets organization and before you signed with the Blue Jays, what kind of work were you doing? Well, it was seen, you know, I left, I hit, when I walked away from the Mets, I, uh, you know, my contract ran through, you know, the season was over in, in August, my minor league season as manager, you know, my contract ran, uh, till Jan January 1st. Right. And so, um, uh, in the meantime, I'm, I'm looking for a job, but I didn't, I didn't have, so I didn't, I wasn't doing anything except looking for a job, you know? And so it was almost came push came to shove. I thought, well, I better find me a job before this contract runs out. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, because JP actually, JP was 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 trying to help me find a job in baseball at at the time. So I thought, well, he when he when he got the Blue Jays GM job, I thought this is golden. There's a job. You know, he'll, he'll have something. For me. And sure enough, he yeah he uh, he saved me. He he was good to me, no doubt. So uh, the first go around with the Blue Jays, you talked about. Uh, when push came to shove, you got in a little bit of a tiff with Shea Hillenbrand uh, back in the day. Uh, after apparently uh, Shea wrote some stuff on the board, the clubhouse board. Now it was reported at the time that you challenged him to a fight. The guy said, no, I don't think so. Uh, Gibby, you look pretty tough to me. Anyway, Hillenbrand was allegedly upset at the time about his lack of playing time. And, you know, you had another third baseman that was doing pretty good at the time. So, uh, well, first of all, here's what General Manager J.P. Ricciardi and you had to say at the time of the Hill and, Hill and Brand altercation. I've known John Gibbons 20-something years, and if you can't play baseball for John Gibbons, uh, you can't play for anybody. And I know there's been some rumors out there that Gibby's job is on the line, and you know, I'm here to tell you that Gibby's job is more secure today than it's ever been. He had his chance yesterday to defend himself in front of his coaches and his players, his teammates. He chose not to. Everybody handles that differently. I've known John Gibbons 20 so what are your thoughts now in retrospect, Gibby, when you look back at that? Well, I, I don't know. You know, he, he, would, he would bigger than me. He probably would whip me. But, but you know, <laughs> something happened when I started hanging out in the uh, hockey country. You know, it's like something came <laughs> over me, man. I thought, man, I'm, a, I'm the way to do it. I'm a, I better fight. You can fight everybody. <laughs> 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 I, can't, I can't believe how young we look, actually. JP, but I had yeah. that chew in. I know my mom wasn't real happy about that. But JP looked nice and fresh and young. And it, that was before, you know, you know, you stay in these, you know how it is. You stay in these businesses long enough, man. You, you don't always look so young when it's over. 
Tell me about it. Tell me about it. So uh, what uh, I know that Hildenbrand later apologized. Were you guys able to bury the hatchet there? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, you know, and I like Shea. Shea. Good for him. He made the all-star team playing there. You know, his big deal, though, I think he, he his frustration was the fact that, you know, when we acquired him from Arizona, you know, he was our DH. You know, uh, and he he wanted to get every he wanted to play, he wanted to play the field you know he wanted because he you know, he still had some career left and he didn't want to be labeled as DH I think that's where his major frustration came from but he, he was traded you know to us and so he had he had no choice and you know we had Troy Gloss and things you know like said a pretty good one mm-hmm. so but Shay you know yeah that's you know those things happen and you, you let them go because uh, you know it's it's not like there was animosity from day one with this guy you know I mean we actually got along pretty good. You might never realize. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, things happen, I guess, in, in the yeah. clubhouse and, and outside sometimes too. Uh, I, it reminds me of another another Blue Jay who had a problem becoming uh, a DH, uh, an outfielder named George Bell. But there was a little bit of a struggle between him and Jimmy Williams at the time too. Yeah. So, you know, this right. isn't an uncommon thing. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's, it's part of it, you know, and uh, nobody wants to like, be labeled that, you know. Uh, now, now, some guys enjoy it late, late in their career when they're, you know, they're just finishing off. They love. They don't want to be on that field anyway, you know. But mm-hmm. you still have, you, know, you still have some years left, and and you, because uh, you know, you get labeled a DH, you go other places. They don't think you can play the field, you know. Right. Yeah. It, that's uh, some guys really want to play every day, right? So, and then of course, there's another incident with uh, Ted Lilly. Uh, Lily apparently didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to hand the ball over to you after he was getting uh, shelled. And tell us how that went down. Well, you know, it's funny because Teddy and I were good, good friends, actually, you know, we, we'd, uh, uh, we used to, we used to run together. Well, before I became the manager, we used to like, you know, the, the starting pitcher pitches one night, right. And then the next day, next couple of days, he's got a running program. And so I, yeah. re- wherever we are, we could be in any city anywhere and I'd go out and run with him, you know? So, uh, not like, I mean, we weren't really necessarily tight, tight, but, you know, uh, we were actually, you know, good guys and we got along re- really well. And then of course this happened and, you know, f- frustration sets in, you know, you, you, uh, as a, as a manager trying to win games. And I, I think that was his walk year anyway. He might've been, might've been his free agent year. Um, so yeah. every little thing like that, uh, you get yanked from the game too often, you know, it affects your future earnings i guess i don't know but you know that that was all behind us too that went away really quick because uh you know the sad part is you know it's in the public eye but there's certain things that happen i don't i don't regret that they have because i think they were actually probably good for the team some of the, some of the things you know. well you know it, it, the team was it was different than than it than it became a little bit later on and uh you know you ended up leaving the organization that first time uh I remember, like, you know, they couldn't give away tickets. There was a time for a while there. I mean, they were just the seats were empty. It was, a, it, was a, it was a cavern in there. But then, you know, things, you came back the second time when, when Alex Anthopoulos decided to deserve another shot, which is really interesting because, you know, you left the organization and you came back with a different GM. But here's some of the news uh, of, the, of that news conference when you returned to the Blue Jays. Let's roll that, Vic. Now, Gibby was the right fit for this organization, for this group. Um, and like I've told, you know, Gibby was the right fit for this organization, for this group. Um, and like I've told, you know, the other, some of the other candidates that we spoke to, you know, a lot of people can manage, a lot of people can general manage, but who's the right fit? You know, you know, from my standpoint, obviously Paul Beeston thought I was the right fit for this organization, for the ownership group, for, for, for him and for what we're trying to do. The same way John is the right fit for me, for the group of players and so on. You know, Nobody in this business has all the answers. I mean, we sometimes we think we do, but you know what? Everybody's got their opinions. That's the beauty of baseball. Everybody, there's different ways you can do things, but but the successful organizations, operations, whatever you want to call it, you know what? They they bounce things off each other, and, and at the end, they come up with the with a, a solution. But there's so many ways to do things in this game. And Alex, you'd sit around and talk with him. He'd ask you about this, and we'd ask him about that. But he but there was there was something there was something different. I mean, he 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 ticked a little different. So. Um, but you could tell, you know what? I mean, he was, he's an ambitious guy, and he's got some guts. I mean, he's he's not afraid to, you know, take some risks. I mean, he did it with with his trades, and then maybe viewed he's doing it by hiring me. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. I would everybody, turn out to be the right hey, one. You were, everybody's thinking were you a different you know, guy? Everybody's thinking, huh? Say that again? Well, no, I just go ahead. Finish your thought. No, you, you know, remember that was coming that after he made the, that big trade with the Florida Marlins. You know, you brought the Reyes over in Burley and all that. So, and then, you know, uh, so everybody, everybody's all, all this excitement. And then, but he still, then now he needs a, the, the manager shows up. And it's like, <laughs> didn't we just fire this guy a few years ago? It's like, like Killjoy or something, you know? <laughs> so, but it worked out. It well, didn't work out right away. But it worked out, yeah. It definitely worked out. So we're, yeah. So I mean, uh, let's 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 talk about Alex a little bit here. I mean, let's let's face it. The guy's done pretty well wherever he's been. He's got a he's got a good mind for baseball. He's got he's very perceptive, and he does pull the right strings. I mean, he goes to uh, L.A. Look what happens there. He goes to Atlanta. Look what happens there. You know, I mean, it's obviously uh, Anthopoulos knows what he's doing. Yeah, Joe, he's a winner. That's that's the best, probably the best way to, to describe him. And he's a, he's a, he's a good he's a good guy, you know. He's uh, he takes care he takes care of his people, his employees. You know, he just you know a great family man. All the all the great qualities, you know, that you you want out of somebody. And then, like you said, just a good baseball guy. You know, um, he, he understands. I mean, he understands all phases of it. You know, there's so many guys in the game now that that are strictly analytics type guys, and that's how they make all their decisions. And they really they really have trouble. Mm-hmm communicate with people even you know it's because they're awkward you know alex is kind of the total package and he understands the value of everything you know and so you know the uh but it's not like that with everyone buddy i'll tell you that no i guess not uh so were you a different guy the second time around were you did you find yourself a loser it seemed older. to me and, and, yeah you were older right <laughs> I saw the difference, right? <laughs> but uh, and I see the difference today too. We're all a little older, but uh, it seemed to me that you you had lightened up. I don't know. Maybe it was just. But uh, did you feel that though? Yeah, Joe. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. You know, I mean, experience teaches you everything. I mean, it's important any walk up any phase of your life. You know, I mean, you 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 learn over time. You, you learn what works and what doesn't work, you learn right and wrong and all those kind of things. You know, it's like being a, being a good father, you know, I mean, sometimes it's trial and error. Right. Um, but yeah, it, uh, and it was, it was new life for me. You know, I knew, uh, so, uh, I was feeling good because, you know, I got, I got that a, a ch- second chance in Toronto, which, you know, I never thought I would, um, never even, I mean, never even occurred to me, you know, and, the only only person that ever happened to was Billy Martin, you know. Billy Martin go back to the Yankees, I don't know, four or five, six times or something. But even Cito, you know, Cito Gaston replaced me when I got fired my fir- the first time. But but Cito had won two championships there, so I could understand that, you know. So it was kind of a um, there's no way I would ever envision this. And in, in, uh, in at first, I thought Alex is nuts, man. He's, he's He's cutting his own throat for crying out loud. And, uh, <laughs> so you know, Joe. You know, thank God it worked out, and uh, uh, I got a, a bunch of great memories. I really did. Yeah, Toronto's. I'm sure like a, like a second home to you now. I, I got you talk about lightening up, and here here's something we found interesting. Uh, Paul Pascu dug this up. It's you calling in to Mike Wilner's post game show. Let's let's have a listen to that. <laughs> All right. And Mailey, I thought that Mailey did a great job. You know, I heard you before the game. What an expert you are, man. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad you were wrong once again. Hey, it happens every once in a while. And it's always good if I'm wrong and you're the one that's right. Well, yeah. Hey, buddy, what about the free tickets up there? If you, if you, <laughs> you call in, you know, what you said something about promising free tickets. You know what? I'll see what I can do about that. We're still trying to work our team uh, uh, to try to get that. I've heard that the the Blue Jays skipper is very interested in uh, in sending out uh, in in giving out a pair of free tickets for every homestand, and we are working on uh, putting on something like that together. I, uh, I appreciate hey, well, the call. Let me question for you. What, oh, yeah, what, yeah, what kind yeah. of uh, what kind of ratings do you get on this show here? I'm confident on this show we get at least seven or eight people. Pretty much every is, night. Is it the same bozos every night? It's really <laughs> don't, uh, you know, they, uh, they have trouble talking? I leave that uh, to the listeners to decide who be the bozos and, and, and who be not. Um, well, all right, yeah. Mike, thanks for taking my call. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the call. 
Yeah. So obviously, uh, Gibby, you you you've loosened up pretty good. <laughs> but and, and Wilder was clearly, uh, you know, aware that it was you. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. You, you know, I always like Mike. You know, and, and uh, I think what happened that night. I think before the game, was it the uh, 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 Russell Martin wasn't playing? I think it was. And so Maley Maley was a catcher, right? And so I think he had he had that good night. So I think even he, he, well, Wilner asked me some smart ass, smart ass answer before you know the game about why you're doing this or something. You know, I mean, guys can't play every yeah. day, but anyway. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I got my point across that uh, <laughs> you know uh, the, 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 the brilliant manager was mainly had a heck of a game. I think that's what it was all. You know, have a little. Fun. It's a, it's amazing how much more fun you can have when you win. You win a game if you lose. Oh, no kidding, eh? Yeah, night, night and day. Well, um, you do. Uh, I, I, I talked about you lightening up, but you did have that one tiff with uh, Josh Donaldson after that uh, that careless uh, bat toss, uh, bat, bat rack toss here. Um, now, if somebody watching all these might think, that, you know, Gibby's a bit of a scrappy guy. I'm thinking here, but what's what's going on? Well, sometimes you get, hey, Joe, sometimes you got to fight fire with fire now. Let's go, man. This is, you know, this ain't, yeah. uh, uh, this is a different day and age. Uh, now, you know what? And that's my boy right there, you know, Josh and I, he's one of my all time favorites. Man. I told you, he's my mom, the all time favorite. He's one of my top. Uh, but we we had our battles. I mean, he's uh, he's like that uh, young racehorse, man. You know, you got to, you got to pin their ears back every now and then. But, uh, yeah, he was complaining about that, that game, and then, you know, I, you know, instead of beating the bat against the, the railing that I'm standing right next to, just just go down that yeah. in the dugout and take your head, and just beat it up against the wall over and over. I'm I'm yeah, fine yeah. with that, but don't get near me. That's all I got. That's yeah, it. yeah. Don't take your anger out on me. I get that. No, 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 no. Yeah, well, well. yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk about the bat flip. I mean, uh, such an incredible uh, event for sure. One of the top two or three sporting events I've ever been to. No question about that, that, that game with the Rangers in uh, game five. Uh, first of all, let, let, let's set it up here. You, you had Jose on your show recently, and, uh, and we're going to listen to how Jose saw it right, right here. Vic, roll that, uh, roll that video. Okay. All right. We don't have it. Okay. So let's talk about this. Um, Hey. Okay. That guy keeps showing up, man. <laughs> okay. So Vic, Vic, you, yeah, let's, yeah, you had, you had, uh, you had Alex on, uh, yeah, sorry, you had, you had Josh Donaldson on your, on your, on your show. Obviously, you buried the hatch with him. You had Jose Batista on the show recently, uh, and and that's clearly, a, it was a good conversation. We watched that interview, uh, but let's let's talk about the bat flip. Here's let's look at the bat flip and, and uh, tell us about what was happening. Let's set this up. What was happening leading up to this? Well, you remember that cra- it was a crazy inning, right? The, the in the top half of the inning where uh, you know Russell's throwing the ball back to the mound and it hits Chew's bat and Odor's on third. And he comes in and scores. You know, and, if, and all, uh, all hell breaks loose. Loose because I didn't I didn't know the rule. You know, because I could not remember. Some- you know, ever seeing that, or even because I was a catcher, ever happened. And even the umpires weren't sure because remember the, the home plate umpire he threw his hands at dead ball. Uh, so anyway, that was the start of the crazy inning, right? And so that place was in an uproar. You know, the, our, our stadium and the fans. And then, of course, then you know, it all came together. You know, and, and uh, it, was, it was almost like it was meant to be. Remember, we you know we dropped the first two games of the series, and, and uh, then we come back and. You know, we were too good a team to bow out that soon. But they were good. They were really good, too, you know. So, anyway, so I'm, I'm sitting on the bench. Jose hits that sucker. And I was looking at statistics or some paper. See, I was analytics before analytics, I guess. Right. But so I didn't, I, you know, then, then all of a sudden I see him. Oh, I see him hit the ball. And I'm, I'm tracking the ball. I didn't see the bat flip until later. So now, 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 I see, I, now I see it in my dreams. Um, right. But it was, a, you know, I guess, I guess to sum it up, Joe, is it couldn't have happened to the more perfect guy for that team. You know, uh, you know, Jose had been there a lot, long time. He came into his own, made his name with the Blue Jays, and he finally got an opportunity. He'd been the face of the franchise for a few years when the team, you know, wasn't very good. 
And he, you know what? And he was a villain throughout baseball, you know, for whatever, for, for different reasons, except on his own team, he was loved and his own, wherever he's playing, he was loved. So it couldn't happen to a more perfect guy at, the, at that perfect time in history. It had been 23 years since playoffs. And uh, it was almost, you know, there's certain things you feel that, you know, are meant to be. And that was one of them. He's like, a, he was like a Brad Marchman in hockey. You, you hated, you hated him when you played against him. You loved playing with him. Uh, but, you know, I, you know, being at that game, that was like one of the two or three most incredible sporting events I've ever been to. I mean, it was such a low after that, you know, after, after the ball went up the bat, there was just such a, ugh, like the whole stadium just sunk. And, and, and then, and then when, when Jose hit that home, but there was emotion. I mean, it's, there was a lot of history between you guys already, between you guys and the Rangers. And yes. then when, when he hit that home run, it just, it just seemed to be, you know, when he flipped that bat to me, it was, it was the right thing to do. It was the right moment. The place was absolutely rocking. I was in that press booth, booth and it felt like hold the building was going to erupt. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. You know, in, uh, you know, it's funny. You know, you look at that bat flip, you know, and, and uh, now everybody's flipping bats. And back back then, it was like the worst thing right. that ever happened to right. the Blue Jays, right? <laughs> and, then, and the Rangers took, you know, they they took issue with it. And of course, we had the problem the following year. But, but nobody, the, the worst part of the hypocrisy of it all, nobody celebrated home runs more than the, uh, than the Rangers did. It's like, what's, you know? Of course. And, uh, I think their frustration lied in the fact that, you know, they, they, they took that too two games to zero lead and then uh, it was slipping away you know yeah it was a beautiful thing it really was a, what a, what an yeah. incredible series that was those two playoff runs were just were just so much fun uh, how much were they, how much fun were they from from your standpoint uh, those two playoff runs well you know Joe I mean it's uh I think you appreciate them more when you, you know you're, you're finished or you step away uh, and you, you sit back and, and think about a lot of things because when you're in, you're, you're in the middle of the grind, you know, it, it, uh, you know, baseball, you do it every day. You just show up and you, and, you know, you, you get excited about a win, but you got to let it go because you got to keep playing games, you know, and same way with losses and, and, uh, but, I, but, I, but there you just, everything just changed in 15, you know, when Alex made those great moves and it was like a light switch, you know, um, we cleaned up a lot of things on the field, our defense in particular, and we just we just took off. So I got caught up in the ride as well, you know. But I, I you know, I, as, as a coach and a manager, you really got to you know keep focused on what you're doing. Um, so, and then in '16 was a totally different type year, and came went down to the end. You know, we had to win that final game. So yeah, I enjoyed the rides. I, I probably didn't uh, enjoy them as much until my day was my my time was up there, and I got to sit back and reflect. You know. Um, years or you know as soon as my career in toronto was over so but it was fun to be a part of because it had been like you know 23 years i think it was since the last yep. since they won and you know that's that's yep. a long time you know and, and uh to be a part of that you know i'm disappointed we didn't win it all i thought the team of 15 i thought we should have won it all you know 16 was a little bit different type team um but some, I got some great memories, you know, I, I really do. And like you know, that bat flip is iconic, you know, you know, nobody's going to, nobody's going to top that bat flip. These guys can flip bats all they want now, but it, it'll never top. That, you know? <laughs> no, yeah, the moment, if it was, everything. If it, was, if it was a younger, if it, if it was, if, uh, if Joe Carter, Joe had hit his, you know, in, in the, in 2000, in mid 2000s, no telling what he would have done. But back then they didn't do that, you know, and, uh, no, so, not, not not ninety three. No, 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 no. Uh, nobody's nobody put best to ninety three. You lay it down gently, and away you go. <laughs> so, because yeah, uh, exactly. you know you they'll do it. Right. Yeah. So you you in addition to get, you know you had a couple of tiffs with the players, but you were also well uh, well known for getting into into it with the umps as well. Okay. So uh, you in twenty sixteen you were ejected. Eight times. I mean, you also made the playoffs that year. Uh, tops in the majors, also a club record. Now, how does a nice guy like you get on the bad side of the umpires uh, like that? I, I don't understand it. No, Joe, hey, Joe. Sometimes you know, if the teams, if the team stinks or you're playing crap, sometimes you don't want to be out there, right? So, hey, this is this is a guaranteed way you can get, you can get in early. Right? Uh, you know, and I, I never faked anything. You know, but you know, frustrations build and. 
you know, job of a manager is, is to protect his players, you know, and, and uh, we had some uh, emotional guys that uh, uh, we could, we could complain with the best of them. There's no doubt, but a lot of them were right most of the time. But if you don't, if you want, if you can expect your players to fight for you, right. You better fight for them, you know, and, and I always viewed it too as the, uh, just part of the game, you know, it, it, uh, you know, a lot of that's been cleaned up with the, you know, the replays and you can review all that stuff. So there's less ejections, you know, but, uh, I think it's just a fun part of the game and, and, uh, you know, so much has changed in the game and, and so much, I think it, of the beauty and the fun of the entertainment side of it is, is, has been taken away, you know, and the game's just not the yeah. same. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So did you ever have an umpire that was, was, he, he, no doubt about it. He started it. He was the jerk. Did you ever have one of those guys or a couple of those guys? Oh yeah. We had some guys that would stick it to us. There's no doubt stick it to like Batiste there. Donaldson. I, I, sometimes I can't blame him, you know, because he's yeah. got, these guys from such had good, such great eyes at the plate. Um, but they were right a lot of times if they could play, but we, they, they let the umpires know it if they, if they thought they missed one. So naturally, you know, kind of everything kind of tightened up in baseball because you, 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 uh, you know, started showing on the te- televised games, you know, the, the strike zone, right? And so, so everybody watching could see uh, whether it was actually a ball or a strike. So that kind of put umpires on their toes a little bit more because it used to be, you know, it used to be, man, if, especially if an umpire didn't like it. That that play would uh, yeah expect big time right nobody didn't nobody said a word because they they knew they had so much control I mean there's some games out there that one what was that one playoff game the Marlins it was Levon Hernandez or something I mean it was a joke Eric Gregg was behind the plate I mean he was calling balls this far off the plate you know but everybody just kind of took it so now my point is now you know they they're under scrutiny a little bit more so they can't uh, uh, yeah. They couldn't yeah. get carried away, but there was times I guarantee they still 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 did it to a few of our guys, and you know I can't blame them. I you know if somebody's barking at me all the time, if, if, even if I'm trying to be right all the you know make all the right calls, that gets a little old. So sometimes you gotta. I can't blame them either. So you can't blame them, but was there anybody who who you thought one, at one ump or two umps that you thought that had it in for you guys that were just unfair to the Jays, or you in particular? I, yeah, well, you know what? I don't know if I'd I, I say anybody was unfair. You know, uh, you know, we I actually, you know, the, the one guy, it wasn't just us that everybody had problems like Angel Hernandez, you know, somebody's everybody yeah. in baseball. Uh, but, you know, my, my, uh, my favorite umpire is Joe West. You know, Joe and I had some, uh, we had some fun times together. We, we go, I go out there and argue. And, you know, Joe, you know, Joe took, would take a lot of heat and, uh, I still thought he was one of the best umpires in the game. There's no doubt in my mind, but he had control of the game, you know, and then of course he went on and set the record for most games umpire in history. Um, but we go out there and we'd laugh, we'd laugh and joke sometimes. And then, uh, especially when you exchange a line of card and then every now he's, he threw me out a couple of times, you know, he just, he just kind of let you have your say and he'd say something smart alecky and, and chunk it, you know, so it was, uh, <laughs> He, yeah, he, he was one of my favorite, and I still think one of the best, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think there's, his longevity proves that. Okay, so yeah. one other thing I want to talk about here is uh, it, it, uh, your daughter, um, Jordan, lead singer for, for the band Self Down. And how cool was it to have Jordan and her band uh, performing at Rogers Center? You know, Joe, what, what, a, what a thrill for me. You know, I, uh, I you saw my mom earlier, and then uh, – you know, yeah, my, my daughter had this band. She started, you know, really late in life. You know, she she'd always liked music, but then she learned how to play the guitar and started somehow ended up with a band, right? And then you know they always have that country weekend uh, every year up there in Toronto, and and you know the uh, Marnie Starkman, you know, in, in her group that does all the PR stuff, um, entertainment stuff. They they brought her her band up there, and, and uh, they got the got to sing and all that. And so she, yes, yeah, as, as a father, you know, it, I'm, uh, I was extra proud, put it that way. Uh, and they loved it. You know, it was, it was, it was great, great exposure for him and big, uh, big stadium like that. And, uh, you know, you always love to show off your kid, you know, and, uh, and I've got three really good ones. So I, it was a thrill for them, but you know, probably even a bigger thrill for me. Yeah. Pretty awesome. No doubt about that. Um, so, okay. 
after 2018, not a very, very successful year, it was determined that you wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be back. But this was unique. Both you and Ross Atkins uh, made that announcement together. You don't see that often. Let's roll that one. Uh, ultimately, what we've decided is that you know, John will not be returning as our manager. So you don't come to those decisions easily. It's been very difficult. Uh, but ultimately, because of you know, who he is as a man and, and our respect for him, we are here today. We're, uh, Ross and I are on good terms. Just one of those things that happen in baseball. You know, um, it's not it's not surprising. It's 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 pretty common, and we've come to the conclusion, you know, for best for both sides, that we go a different directions. So that's uh, that's where we're at today. And you said at the time you're always a Blue Jay, right? That's that's it. Oh, John yeah. Torrey, the mayor, proclaimed I'm a uh, September twenty sixth. John, uh, John 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 Gibbons Day. Yeah. Hey, do you guys still, still celebrate that up there, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I've been bought back. For well, well yeah, COVID, yeah. COVID. Kind of screwed it's part up. of Thanksgiving, though. It's part of Thanksgiving. Oh. It's part of Canadian oh, Thanksgiving. It's a little earlier. Well, I'm, 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 the big, I'm the big turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, you know, that, that, you know we, we parted on good terms. You know, uh, uh, I've always felt that, you know, a, a general manager should have his own manager right i mean that's just because there's too much that goes into the job there's too much uh uh you know you got to be able to work together you got to like each other that doesn't mean you have to be able to agree but if you have somebody you don't know I mean, it's 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 uh it, be, it can be difficult you know so but the team was playing good when ross came in so naturally you know they kept me around i'm thankful for that you know they, they took care of me that way um so but so that was kind of part of that. They they needed their guy because we all knew when, when things started going south, there was going to be changes, and rightfully so. I mean, that was that's no shock. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it ended in a, in a cool way. There's, there's no doubt. Yeah, I, but that's the first time I've seen a manager getting a chance to take part in his own his own firing announcement. That was <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. His own funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like speaking at your own funeral. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> you know it's amazing. Hey, let too, me say a few words here. <laughs> yeah. I say this to everybody. It's like you know I, they say, say God, you put a great reception. I said, and I always use this. I said, I said, you know, it's like, but it's like a funeral, right? When you go to a funeral, when everybody gets up to talk, have you ever heard a bad eulogy? Have you ever heard anybody say that? What an asshole that guy was. We're glad he's gone. <laughs> no, but they're sitting down the church going and saying that, you know. But so it's kind of like. What a what a wonderful day! <laughs> well, obviously they're not, they're not going to be saying yeah, saying that with you sitting there. That's for sure. You're if you're there, you're making sure they say nice things about you. <laughs> oh, so, uh, any any anim, anim, oh, I, you, you already touched so no animosity towards a uh, uh, no, fire, but no, you saw, no. yeah, you saw the the managerial change this year uh, under under. Uh, Charlie, the the Jays were forty six and forty two, still you know in the in the wild card hunt, but then they moved made the move over to, to John Schneider, and under Schneider they were forty six and twenty eight, so they were considerably a uh, considerable amount better. Did, did what, what what was the reason for that? You think? I've got no idea, Joe. I, I really don't. You know, because uh, I mean it's it's not normal when when you're, uh, you know, I think you know they had been struggling at the time, uh, but still they held a wild card spot. You usually don't see that. You usually see that when things are really going south in a hurry. Um, so, but I, so I don't know what the internal feeling was or what have you. Um, but you know, uh, Schneider did end up doing a good job, you know, and he got rewarded for it. Um, it's, it's hard to say, you know, in, I, I can, I work for Ned Yost in Kansas city and I think it happened to Ned when he was in Milwaukee. Um, I'm not sure what you – they were in a playoff spot in September, and he got fired, right? Then I think Dale Swain took over and took him to the playoffs. So it's very rare when you're in a position of uh, – where you're kind of in the driver's seat. So who knows? Yeah. Obviously, uh, had to be, there had to be some tension somewhere, you know I mean? Uh, you know, otherwise, you, you don't do that. Right. Yeah, the only thing that I can remember the Jays doing something like that was when uh, Williams was uh, fired and, and Cito took over, and they ended up uh, making the playoffs after that. But that was yeah. But, but okay, at the so, time, but at the time they weren't they weren't very good. That's why they made the no. Team. That's right. They were terrible. They had a terrible start. Yeah. That's right. Completely yeah. different scenario. Yeah, it's yeah. almost it's almost uh, like more almost like more pressure on Schneider when he takes over now because they are in a uh, yeah. opposition. 
if they, they got to perform now. Thinks in your way out of it, you know, everybody's writing right. the season off anyway. You know, so that's not, if that's you, not if they don't perform for you, and you'll probably never get another shot, right? If they, right, if you don't, exactly. if you, so, yeah. So okay, so let's talk about let's talk about the big undoing. Okay, game two against uh, uh, you know against uh, Seattle. Uh, so there's there's a whole bunch of speculation as to what happened and what, where where the where the turning point was the, the TSN turning point was it pulling Gosman out too soon was it leaving Mesa or Bass in too long was it not putting Simber in sooner instead was it leaving uh, Romano too long where do you see the the biggest problems in that in that in what went down in game two you know it, you know it's it's hard for me to say and this it would be fair to me to say. Uh, Either because I've been in that spot, not not in the magnitude of that, right? Let's say, you know, I've been in those kind of games, but not in the. Uh, no. um, you know, I, I think why there's so much, uh, you know, there's so much debate over things nowadays is because analytics is so heavy in our game, and everybody thinks you know that managers aren't allowed to think for themselves any, anymore, and, and that's true in a lot of cases, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so. Well, did the number did the number say you should have taken him out, or did was that your own decision? So that's kind of the beauty of baseball. There's so many different ways to do things, and you can debate it all day long. And, and uh, you know, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. And you know, it's, or well, if it works, you're you're a, you're a genius. If it doesn't, but nobody really knows where the, the nowadays where the where those decisions are made. And uh, uh, so uh, you know, so it's 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 funny, you know. In, I guess it the, the turned out to be one of the biggest, his, historically biggest uh, lead that was blown in playoff, and that that that's what really hurts, you know, because they were in a good position. But um, you know, I will say this though: it's t- it's tough to bring in a bullpen guy with the bases juiced, you know. It, it's it's because mm-hmm. he, he leaves leaves him no room for error, uh, and you know the the intensity of those kind of games, you know, it's a little bit different than their regular season, you know. Because they're they're so so if they're a little off or they're a little bit you know they're they're trying to gather their own selves, there's no breathing room you know. So but you know in reality what happened it was a perfectly placed ball you know you couldn't have gone out there and dropped it yeah any better you know and and what generally happens too in those situations the outfielders play deeper anyway right they don't want they don't want ball hit the gap so yeah. all three run scores so that you know what that's going to give that that particular ball more room to drop in is exactly what happened. They score anyway, you know? So sometimes, you know, that you can't explain things, why they happen. They just happen. It's almost like, well, I'm just supposed to go down in history. I don't know. It may be good or it may be bad, but at least I'm down in history. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You wonder <laughs> if like, if, if, if maybe Springer calls a little louder, Bo gets out of the way, but you know, you got well, a lot of though, building. He's- well, he's still he's still on he's still on a dead run to get to that ball. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Actually, I think it, I think it, I think even maybe a week or two before that, um, it was the same type ball that was hit, and I can remember people were criticizing where well, Springer he's supposed to catch that ball, but it's it's that ball that nobody knows really for sure who's going to get there. You know, I mean, it, it it you know the outfielder goes back, the right field, the center center fielder's always got priority over anybody on on a, those those type of balls, right? And uh, mm-hmm. And so, you know, they in, in a bow's running back to the shortstop. And that's a tough play because it's over his shoulder. But sometimes, you know, it, the position of the outfielder, you know, and most times it's by design, keeps them from getting to certain balls, you know. And, and it's, it's like pick your poison, you know. You want to play, you want to cover the deep ball that you know if you, if you don't if you don't get to it, will score all three runs at double. Where you, right. you know, you, it's kind of tough to play uh, to defend yourself for that type of ball, you know. And um, so I, I don't think that you can blame anybody for that and you know, that ball dropping in because those three, they all went at it, or the bow in, in uh, spring all went at it as hard as they could, you know. And yeah. it gets, you Which know, and, it, it, and yeah, and you know what? They're, they're bodies, man. They're, they're vulnerable. They're, they're going all out. And, uh, you know, actually lucky there wasn't worse injuries, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what, what the, 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 the player's job is. I remember Brett Laurie, people would get mad because he'd get hurt all the time because he – Went after balls and was was he going after that ball? Because he went after everything. That's his job, you know. Yeah. See, and then, and then when they don't go after one, it's like, what a dog yeah. that guy! It's like, yeah, yeah no kidding, no kidding. You know, you think it, it's such a hockey crazed country. You know, 
you ain't going to get away with not busting your butt going after everything. Yeah, exactly. Would, exactly. You know, it, it, you should. Yeah. Well, we like our players to play hard. So I, yes, I, I like to play. It's just, it was a perfect storm. That's all it was. Just a perfect storm. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what surprised you the most about the playoffs so far? Well, you know, the top dogs, man, they got bounced really quick, you know, and the, you know, naturally the Phillies, the Phillies, you know, getting in, you know, they were the last team, I think, to qualify. Um, and, you know, the, is, we we're just talking about Schneider taking over for Charlie Montoya. Rob Thompson, a good Canadian boy, taking over for Girardi, right? But that was, you know, the team was going really bad in, in Philly. And they just took off with, I think, whatever the spark was, whether it was, you know, Tom's kind of an easygoing guy. And uh, Girardi's kind of a, is more of a structured, uh, very disciplined, probably not going to laugh as much, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And that's maybe just what that team needed, right? And then they, they but see, that's the beauty of, Extra wild cards, you know, if in a normal year, Phillies don't even get in. Now they're going to the World Series. You know? But the fact that the Dodgers, the Dodgers got bounced by the Padres, who they owned all year, is a big shock, right? You know, the Mets, the Mets took that lead all the way down to the final weekend, and Atlanta got yeah. them. And then, of course, in Atlanta losing to the Phillies. And, the, and then, of course, I mean, there's been so many crazy things. Then, then the big comeback by Seattle, right? And then they go down to Houston the first game. They blow that in the ninth inning. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's it's been an adventurous playoffs, you know, and and you know, he now 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 you look at it, now you take a team like Houston, right? Best best record now. See now they're supposed to win, and they kind of you know you got I, I the way I look at it, you got the the Astros, the Dodgers, and, and the Braves now are the your your uh, yeah your top Elite. teams, right? Yeah, even the Yankees. Put the Yankees in there. The yeah. Red Sox, you know, I'm sure they'll be back, but those are the teams you're supposed to get in every year, right? Because of that good. So now they put themselves expectations at a different level where it's not just about getting in the playoffs. So what you get in the playoffs, you get the best resources you're supposed to, right? Now it's what are you gonna win? You know? And so when those teams like the I think the Dodgers as great as they've been or been uh as many games they won, they won one championship. Same way with Houston now. Houston won that one in seventeen. And with the, with the you know the cheating scandal year, so nobody knows for sure what. So now they're expected to win that, so they have to, you know it's not it's not good enough to get there anymore. Now they got to start winning. And where the Phillies got nothing to lose, you know they weren't supposed to be there any, anyway. So it's kind of a different dynamic, and it all depends on how you want to look at it. Right. So the 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 pressures on the pressures on the the Astros, no question about it, and, and the Phillies are you know they'll be loosey goosey, but. They got nothing to lose. Getting where they are is is is, is fantastic. They've already been the they're Philly all, fan. Other than, they yeah. got nothing to lose. But other, the Philly fans never they don't they, they don't take it. They're awful. They're awful. Oh, they're tough, man. They're, they're tough. awful. Well, you know what? The, the Astros haven't lost a game yet. Uh, that's you know, right. But well, I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't, I don't know if yeah. anybody ever swept through it, but because usually the odds are starting to go against you now. You got to lose one. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure in the old days when there was just the ALCS and then the World Series, there were teams that swept through. But in this, yeah. in, with the wild card and everything else, and the, the division yeah, series, yeah. I don't think anybody's ever swept all the uh, way through. So that might uh, be a first. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Well, listen, Gibby, I want to thank you for for taking the time to join us. This has been fantastic. Love catching up with you, my friend. It's it's, it's awesome. Uh, I want to ask you about the podcast. How can we watch it? And uh, who's coming up? <laughs> Well, no, you're the wrong, I'm the wrong guy to ask how you can watch it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay. We had Alex Anthony. Huh? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. You can Google it, I guess. I, do, I found it on YouTube, but you got Alex coming up? Well, uh, yeah. Ale Alex, we, we recorded it yesterday. It's going to be a two part okay. show. So, yesterday, Beautiful. And, and, say there now, and then and the next week. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, you know, uh, touch a base with some old friends and, and, uh, I really enjoyed that, but I enjoy yeah. Joe. Hey, I appreciate you getting me on the show, man. I've had a great time, and uh, you got a great yeah. show, and it's, I'm glad to be a part of. It. Well, Gibby, it's it's absolutely you know it's guys like you who make it, my friend. You're you're just you're awesome. Thank and, you, and thank you, you too, Peter. man. Uh, All right, well, pr appreciate you. All right, we'll be watching. All right, Joe. You're also take on care. Twitter now too, so we we will be following you on oh, Twitter. Yeah. We're doing that too. media, yeah. darling. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Darling, I'm not so sure. Media, yeah. 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 Exactly. Anyway, buddy.
Thank you so Thanks, much. Tom. More sports when Bye -bye. we come back. More Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show coming up after the break. Sports! Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Joe Tilly Sports is brought to you by COSA, Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at COSAonline.com and check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing year round. Go to HPIBet.com for all your wagering options. Become a member today and your first bet is free. That's HPIBet.com. You know why that happened? You didn't fix your ball mark. The birds around here are very protective of the course, and when people don't take care of it, this is what happens. It's pretty simple. Just find your mark, fix it, and at least one other. Hey, look at the bright side. We're not up on the northern course. They've got bears and moose. Visit moregolf.ca today. You'll find everything a golfer could need from balls, gloves, and clubs to custom fitting opportunities and training gear. Go to moregolf.ca and get $20 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Just enter the promo code JT Sports. Now my Costa Swiss pick of the week. Last week, I went to Thursday night's eighth race at Mohawk, second leg of the Harvest Series. I took slick and quick with Travis Cullen in the buggy. Looked great for most of the races. He took the lead heading into the stretch, but slick and quick ran out of steam. Sobble ace driven by Bob McClure got it done for Sobble Farm. Otis Hall, the trainer, McClure's third straight win on the night. The 178 trifecta paid $252. This week, I'm going to the $600,000 final of the Breeders' Cup Open Pace. Bulldog Hanover looks to avenge that rare loss last time out. The world record holder might get a challenge from tattoo artists, but should get the job done. Yes, it's the Breeders' Crown at Woodbine Mohawk Park, October 28th and 29th. 12 championship races over two incredible nights of racing. Several million dollars in purses. For all the racing updates, visit Costa TV on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go to hpibet.com for your wagering options. This is the Excellent Sports Adventure. Brought to you by Lycom. Maple Leafs have hit the road for a wee spell. They open up the road trip in feisty fashion in Winnipeg. The Bruisers got things started. Kyle Clifford gets a puck to the Wayne train. Wayne Simmons behind the back for David Kemp. Nicely done. The power play was also clicking. Austin Matthews with a shot from the point. John Tavares with that incredible eye-to-hand coordination. That is a terrific redirect. Johnny T with a pair. The Buds take it four to one. 
Game two of the trip in Vegas, Tex Lee, Phil Kessel in his record-tying 989th straight game, fires Nick Waugh, cleans up. The Golden Knights go on to win it 3-1. to one. Well, they do this all the time in the AHL, but you rarely see this in the NBA. Yes, the Raptors and the Heat squaring off for the second time in three nights in the same venue. This, after tempers flared in the first game, Christian Coloco gets shoved by Caleb Martin. All heck broke loose. Both players were ejected. Raps also lost Scotty Barnes with an ankle injury. After being down 22 points in this game, the Dinos made a game of it. Pascal Siakam with 37 points. Spicy P also had his fifth career triple-double. The rally fell short, though, as a heat hang on to win it. A much better result in the second Miami date. Pascal can't get it to go. Precious Achua with one of 22 rebounds out to OG Ananobi. Then Siakam kicks up to Fred Van Vliet, to Gary Trent Jr., a quarter three dagger as the refs sink the heat 98-90. to The CFO playoff picture has cleared up considerably. The Argos were looking to set up top spot in the East. Sew it up. Yes, indeed, they did by knocking off the Alouettes on a lovely day in Montreal. Early second half, McLeod Bethel Thompson with lots of time lays it up. Curly Gittens Jr. with the adjustment, and he's got a 39-yard touchdown. Back on the Owls, Trevor Harris hits Jake Wenicke for the score. Harris passed for 413 yards, two TDs, time winding down, tie game. Boris Beattie, a 47-yard field goal try. It's wide, but the Argos get a single point to win at 24-23. They clinch first in the East. Tie Cats closing in on a playoff spot. Home to Ottawa, home side driving. Dane Evans is going to call his own number. He gets it in for six with the two-point convert. Final ticks, tie game. Seth Small, a 30-yard field goal, nails it. Cats take it 30-27 with the Saskatchewan loss. They sealed up a playoff spot and will face Montreal in the Eastern Final. The Blue Jays made it official. How could they not? John Schneider is the full-time manager. Under Schneider, they went 46-28, and and they made the playoffs. Basically, I've said it before, this is a dream scenario for me. Um, over 20 years with this organization, there are so many people that have uh, kind of helped me to get to this point. Uh, my family, obviously, Jesse and the boys, Gunnar and Grayson. Uh, my parents, Kath and Dave, and my brothers, Matt and Kev, who aren't here. But from them to coaches, teammates, staff, up and down the minor leagues and here in the big leagues, um, couldn't ask for a better situation to be in. This organization has made me feel like uh, a family member since day one. We absolutely have, you know, fallen in love with the city here, love being here. Um, and I'm just extremely humbled and honored to, to lead this group and hopefully just achieve our goal of winning World Series here. Um, this was kind of the end goal. Now, understanding that it, it may not happen with the organization I was working with, um, but I think it makes it that much more special to be sitting here with this hat, with this jersey on. The hottest tennis player on the planet? Well, that would be Canada's own Felix Oje Aliassime, the 22-year-old Montreal native, run up his second ATP title in as many weeks, slugging his way to victory in the European Open at Antwerp, Belgium. Felix rolled over American Sebastian Corda, 6-3, 6-4 in the final. Rory McIlroy is back on top of the world rankings after winning South Carolina. Now, here's our shot of the week. God damn it. Four! Oh, Edgar this is Tilly so good. On the very challenging par three eight here at Wind Dance. Oh, She's oh, always oh. chipped already chipped in from 40 yards today, and that will set her up for a nice birdie. Oh. Yay, opportunity. Yay, yay, yay. Today's environmental tip: use fewer plastic bags. Plastic bags are made from fossil fuels, and that has a negative impact on the climate. Drains clogged with plastic waste can contribute to major flooding. Plastic bags harm wildlife in numerous ways. They may ingest the plastic. Animals can get tangled in discarded plastic. RICOM. 
Passionate people who turn complicated business problems into simplified technology solutions for public and private sector real estate, properties, portfolios, and enterprise customers. Optimize and future-proof smart buildings from the ground up. The latest in fault locating, base building network design, managed services, cybersecurity, data analytics. Our fault detection will support all smart strategies, define projected outcomes for capital planning, and reduce environmental impact. RICOM, smart protection solutions. At RICOM, we're building a path to a smart and environmentally friendly future. And we want to thank all of the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all-around great people. We highly recommend them all. And a reminder that the show is available on Spotify, Breaker, iTunes, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, as well as the Spanglish Network, Zingo TV, and Buzz TV Live. Also, you really want to check out our YouTube channel. There are past shows available, weekly sportscasts, all kinds of cool segments. Like and subscribe. It's free. Why not? Thanks once again to John Gibbons for being on the program. Thank you for watching. And join us next week when we talk to the Fighting Wilcox Brothers. Yes, about to make some history. We'll see you then. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show is brought to you by Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family and your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did. 905-686-5678. Do you want to buy or sell a home? Could 31 years of real estate experience help you? Why not speak to an amazing team that loves to overpromise and overdeliver? Aldo has a tremendous team of experts on staff. They are committed to making your next real estate transaction smooth and comfortable. Call 416 Get Aldo or visit getaldo.com. MNP a leading Canadian national accounting, tax, and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more. Their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. Hi, I'm Joe Tilly. This November, join me and my wife, Penny Claire, for a trip of a lifetime. Two weeks in Egypt and Jordan. Imagine yourself riding a camel beside the Great Pyramids, cruising the Nile River, viewing the temples at Abu Simbel, exploring the desert at Wadi Rum visiting the ancient city of Petra, and swimming in the world-renowned Dead Sea. Only $41.99 all-inclusive, with direct flight from Toronto, free upgrade to five-star hotels, and the cruise. Visit tripopo.com and book today to get an extra $100 room bonus credit. Let's travel.